Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another MLB video of mine. I'm going to be comparing the New York Yankees to the Tampa Bay Rays. My last video like this got a lot of views, so I'm going to be doing this again. I hope you guys enjoy. Looking at the New York Yankees first, starting off with their catcher, we have Gary Sanchez. There's a lot of rumors to whether he is going to be the starting catcher next year. I believe he is. There's a lot of potential with him, but he's coming off of a very bad 2020 season. In 49 games, he had 10 home runs and 24 RBIs, but only a 147 batting average. So the contact is not there, uh, but the power definitely is. He has 10 home runs in uh, 49 games. So he has a lot of power, but the, the contact isn't really there. His defense isn't really the best either. I could go into the defensive stats, but I don't want this to be a 20-minute video where 10 minutes of it is me talking about defensive stats. So I'm just going to be looking at the offense today. Uh, the offense could get better for Sanchez. His power is there, but his, his contact needs to get better. That's all there is to it. Looking at the race catcher, they used Mike Zanino, Michael Perez, and I think and Kevin Smith. So they used three different ones. I'm just going to be looking at Zanino for right now. Or I could even look at Perez too because they both were basically the starters. Zanino is very similar to Sanchez. 28 games, he had four home runs, 10 RBIs, and a one seven, or 147 batting average. So the same batting average as Sanchez. Uh, both of the catchers are similar. They both have power, not a lot of contact, and they're both like pretty much the same behind the plate. And then Perez played in 38 games. He only had one home run, 13 RBIs, and a 167 uh, batting average. So obviously his offense could get better, but uh, you never know. Going over to first base for the Yankees, we have Luke Voigt. And keep in mind, this isn't a 62-game season. Voigt played absolutely insane. He played in 56 games while dealing injuries the whole year uh, with his foot. He had 22 home runs, 52 RBIs, and a 277 batting average. So obviously a very good offensive performance there. The Tampa Bay Rays used G-Man Choi and Nate Lowe as their first baseman. Uh, combining for the whole season, Choi had three home runs, 16 RBIs, and a 230 batting average, where Lowe had four home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 224 batting average. So the contact, or at least the batting average, wasn't really there. Uh, both of them have some pop against right-handed pitchers, but um, I could definitely see Tampa in the market for a right-handed bat that can hit left-handed pitchers. Their first baseman didn't really handle left-handers very well. Uh, and they also had Yoshi Susugo, who played thir uh, third and first. So they, they used a couple options at first base. But the Yankees definitely have a better first baseman than Luke Voigt. Moving over to second base, we have DJ LeMahieu, who was uh, the batting title winner. And he was in talks for the MVP. He did not win that, though. In 50 games, he had 10 home runs, 27 RBIs, and a 364 batting average. The batting average is insane. Uh, the home runs... Um, he, he, was, he was decent with the home runs. He hit most of them over the short porch in Yankee Stadium, though. Uh, that's mostly where he gets his power from. So the power, he doesn't really have tremendous power, but he has enough. It still counts for the same if it goes over the short porch or not. So it doesn't really matter about that. But his average is insane, and he's really good defensively as well. Uh, he is a free agent right now, and he's one of the bigger ones. And if you want to be up to date and see when he signs at the moment it happens, be sure to subscribe because I'm pretty fast to cover all this news and the breaking news. So stay tuned for that. Moving over to shortstop, the Yankees used, let me find him. Where is Glaber Torres? Here he is. 42 games played. He had three home runs, 16 RBIs, and a 243 average. Not the best season. He is a way better hitter than this, and he is very young as well. So he has a lot of room to get better, and I believe that he is, uh, whether it be a second base or shortstop. But he is a really good young player, and he's going to get a lot better. This was a bit of a down year for him. The Tampa Bay Rays had another young shortstop in Willie Adamas. 54 games played, 8 home runs, 23 RBIs, and a 259 batting average. Not a terrible offensive year. Uh, his offense in the postseason was pretty bad. But his defense is actually one of the best uh, defensive games in the MLB. He has a very strong arm, very good defensively. He's going to be really good in the future. Another young player. Um, both of these teams have a lot of young players in their infield. And then the Yankees have Gio Urshela as their third baseman. He played in 43 games, 6 home runs, 30 RBIs, almost a 300 batting average at 298. And he's very good defensively, a very solid third baseman who's not going to be um, taking a lot of money per year. So a very good option for the Yankees. 
the Rays used a couple of people at third base. Uh, they used Mike Brasso, Yandy Diaz, Joey Wendell, and Yoshi Susugo. Um, so I'm just going to focus on Joey Wendell because he was mainly the third baseman. In 50 games, he's a utility man, so he can play anywhere. But in 50 games, he had four home runs, 17 RBIs, and a 286 batting average. Uh, hitting in the leadoff spot, that's pretty good. So he is a pretty good um, all-around player, actually, and it gives him a lot more skill that he can play anywhere on the field. It doesn't really give him more skill, but it gives him more options to play, and he can put up bigger numbers. So definitely a solid player there. Looking at Yandy Diaz, 34 games, 2 home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 307 batting average. So both of them have a really good batting average, um, not a lot of home runs. Tampa Bay doesn't really rely on home runs a lot, but uh, we can get into that. And looking at, I forgot, Tampa Bay's second baseman, Brandon Lowe, he had 14 home runs and 37 RBIs in 56 games played and a 269 batting average, so a really good hitter there. Uh, he's going to be their second baseman for a while unless Tampa Bay decides to trade him, so that's going to be exciting to watch. Moving over to the outfield, in right field for the New York Yankees, they have Aaron Judge, uh, who didn't play a lot. He only played 28 games. He was dealing with injuries, and so was Giancarlo Stanton, but I'll get into that at another point in this video. Uh, Judge had 9 home runs, 22 RBIs, and a 257 average. He is a way better hitter than this, and I'm surprised that he even put up 9 home runs in 28 games. Uh, I think he was like 3rd on the team in home runs, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, and he's really good defensively as well. Lots of He has a strong arm, and he has a really good defensive game that he brings. Moving over to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay used a couple right fielders. Um, Austin Meadows, oh, he's listed as a left fielder. Hunter Renfro. Um, Manuel Margot, they have a lot of outfielders actually, Brett Phillips, uh, let's see who else do they have here, uh, Rosarena and O'Grady, so um, they have a lot of options, I've seen them use multiple, but I'm just going to speak on Austin Meadows right now, uh, because he mainly played right field, in 36 games, he had 4 home runs, 13 RBIs, and a 205 batting average, not the best season, he came over in the Chris Archer deal with Tyler Glasnow, um, he has a lot of potential, he's still very young, but he just didn't really put the numbers up this season. I feel like he will have a bounce back year this year though, so I have high hopes for him, um, but he definitely could get better. Moving over to center field for the Yankees, they have Aaron Hicks, let me just find him on this right here. Uh, 54 games played, 6 home runs at the short porch, he loves hitting in Yankee Stadium. 21 RBIs and a 225 batting average. So obviously the batting average could get better, but he was a very good all-around player. His defense is really game-changing out in center field. He has a very strong arm, and he could definitely make a difference out in the outfield. So that's very good for him. And you can see the OPS numbers for everyone here as well. So if you want to see that for a player, you can pause the video and see. Going over to Tampa Bay, we have a similar player in Kevin Kiermaier. Uh, 49 games played. Uh, three home runs, 22 RBIs. They're not going to have the highest average for batting, but uh, Kiermaier is the best center fielder uh, defensively. Multiple-time gold glove winner. He's just insane out in center field. Moving out to left field, the Yankees. Uh, let me just find him. Clint Fraser. I think he's at the top. Yeah, he is. 39 games, 8 home runs, 26 RBIs, and a 267 batting average. Clint Fraser again, another young player who's going into his prime. I've heard him in some trade rumors, but I don't think he's going to be traded. Uh, very solid piece of the Yankees organization going forward, and I'm excited to see what he can do. He had a pretty good season. And then the left field, uh, they used Hunter Renfro, Randy Rosarena, Manuel Margot. Sorry, I almost just burped. Um, Margot played 47 games. I'm just going to use Margot because he was their main one. Uh, or actually, he played some right field too. I could use a Rosarena and Margot. So Rosarena only played 23 games in the regular season. Obviously, we know he had the historic off season, or not off season, post season. My bad. Uh, in 23 regular season games, he had seven home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 281 batting average. Very good work in a 23 game season. And obviously, we know what he did in the playoffs. Um, uh, Margot had 47 games played with only one home run and 11 RBIs and a 269 batting average. I don't know how he only hit one home run in that time frame, but he did. Uh, maybe his power gets better hitting in Tampa Bay, but um, we're going to have to see. And then moving over to the DH for both teams. The Yankees used Giancarlo Stanton as their, G as their DH. Let me find him right here. 
23 games played. He was injured like Judge. He was dealing with injuries. Uh, most players took the shortened season as a time to recover. He only had four home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 250 batting average. Definitely uh, could get better, but he was injured and shortened season, all that. Um, he did hit a grand slam in the postseason, though, against Tampa Bay. And the reason I'm comparing these teams is because Tampa Bay beat the Yankees to go into the World Series. I'll get into that later. And now talking about the DH for the Tampa Bay Rays. They have a lot of power hitters. Hunter Renfro, Susugo. Um, if they're playing Troy at first base, they can use Lau. So they have lots of options for the DH. Um, so you can pause the video and look at all their stats here. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Stanton is better than anyone on the Rays as far as the DH goes. So the Yankees definitely have a better team. They spend a lot more money. But the Rays ended up beating the Yankees in the postseason so i would uh i don't know what's going on there let me know in the comments what you think about that but um yeah let me know who you think the better team is as well on paper the better team is definitely the new york yankees especially with the rotation of garrett cole luis severino um they have a couple open spots right now of tanaka and paxton on the free agent market debbie garcia so they definitely have a really good team uh, they spend a lot more money as well, but Tampa Bay did end up beating them. Tampa Bay has a really good team as well. They just got rid of Blake Snell, but the rotation still has Tyler Glasnow, Yanni Chirinos, Ryan Yarbrough, uh, Brandon McKay, and Michael Waka. So they definitely could improve there. But um, yeah, that's just my opinion, and these are the stats for the players. I personally think, and the stats back it up, that the Yankees are a better team. But the, uh, the Yankees did end up losing to the race, so let me know what you think about that. If you enjoyed this video or want to have fast news about the MLB, uh, please subscribe down below and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.